Hey guys, it's Aiden here and welcome back to episode 2 of this mini travel vlog. Last you saw, I flew back to Hong Kong where I was at home and spent a lot of time with friends and family and whatnot. And I, in this episode, this first part here, I'm going to show you some of the stuff I did back at home. Just spending time with family, spending time with friends, you know, enjoying the cool food. The best thing about Hong Kong really is, you know, how everything is so accessible. Well, I've always grew up here. It's where all my friends are for the most part. And you know, the food culture, street food, the amount of variety that you can find in general is great. So I really do want to show you guys that a little bit and then second half of this you'll see me flying back to, to Toronto into Waterloo specifically and you'll see a little bit from my long 14 hour stopover in San Francisco you know and I visited some places I'm not gonna spoil anymore right now so let's just dive straight into the video and I hope you guys enjoy overall for the first week when I got back I came and saw this new mall open just a month before so I had to take a look at it and then I went with a friend and then we got some food there and of course I was getting a lot of food with friends in general then I went to visit my old high school and then a few days after I went to uh, OP guy K Ron as you guys know him on this channel it was his farewell party he was going to Canada so we had a little celebration there as you can see here where's Mikkel holidays come on out yeah it would be a shame if I was to step on him <laughs> and now for some time of fluff. A few days after the party, we went to a seafood restaurant with family where you essentially you go to the seafood market next to it and you buy the seafood there and then you take it back to the chefs and you tell them how you want her repaired. Then three days later, Dean Lewis was in Hong Kong, so I went to see his concert. Here are some clips from that and I hope you enjoy this one. It's been Few days after that, so in the beginning of September, I went to the Ocean Park Water World, which opened a few years back, but I never had the chance to go to before. It was pretty fun. I went with friends. As you can see here, I completely butchered. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had my phone inside a water-resistant bag the entire time, so I was able to use it kind of like a GoPro during this ride. So, which is where all this footage came from. So. My phone! <laughs> <laughs> Hello? Oh, oh hey, let the boy begin. Oh, 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 shit! Oh, shit! Unfortunately, the thunderstorm warning came on for a bit, so we were confined inside to the wave pool and the lazy river just racing with each other and messing with each other until the outdoor slides could reopen again, as you can see here. Like, the park was on the small side of things, there weren't that many rides, but it was very fun, and at the end of the day, we were starving, so we went out for Korean BBQ together, and yeah. And after all that, for the week after, it was mostly spending time with friends, just exploring around Hong Kong, spending with family, and of course, like before, the night we left, we had some nice Japanese food. Which meant the day after, it was time for me to head back over into Canada and stop over through San Francisco. Unfortunately, the weather that day was pretty bad and there was even flooding in some areas, but it didn't affect us at the end of the day. First thing I want to do here before I go to the lounge, I wanted to see the new observation deck. I've been waiting to see this new observation deck for so long and now that I'm flying out of Hong Kong again, I get to see it and I'm actually looking at it right from outside the window right now. I'm going up there, I'm going to do some quick plane spotting first. The water outside has been pretty bad actually, but the visibility here in the airport is better, so I'm going to 
get some plane pictures, show some videos right before we head over. Okay, yeah, the best thing about this area is I'm not even at the top and at the, at the official sky deck and there's already a flooring and look at what I can see right below me. So officially we're done in sky deck area, you can see all the water on the, on the runway actually. So it's a pretty nice view, you can see things coming in and you can actually see a plan of the future expansion of Hong Kong Airport. So we're currently here, Terminal 1 next to the satellite concourse. Ter Terminal 2 concourse is what you saw, what I showed you just right now at their building, so that's a new expansion. Zero 07 left. So this north runway is already a new center runway is still being renovated out because of all this works. So I'm very excited to see what Hong Kong airport will be like in the future. And the free runway system will definitely improve the traffic situation assuming COVID recovery goes to plan. So I'm really excited to see what this will all be like when it's all finished. Oh yeah, this is what I like to see. Oh, Hong Kong Express A319 is on the pushback. That's very nice little baby bus. And then you can see the Greater Berry Airlines Boeing 737-800. This is my first time seeing this. And it's so rare to see a 737 in Hong Kong because it's very A320 predominant. And you can actually see the signs there. It's a bit glary. I'd say that plane spotting stuff was a huge success. Now Plaza Premium Lounge is two here, Gate 1 and Gate 40. Hope, I'm gonna go to Gate 1 because it's closer to the gate. I really hope it isn't that full. Now, one thing I do like about Plaza Premium Lounge is how many locations they have here in Hong Kong Airport. There's three. One here near Gate 1, one in Gate 40, one in Gate 60. So it's actually quite convenient. And one thing I do like is also like, just look at the space. Long private cozy corner and a small table so I can eat food. And a charging area. And a charging area. Pretty good if you ask me, so I'm just gonna grab some food and chill a bit. I wanna download some some aviation charts first, then I'm just gonna just relax, watch I know watch some YouTube before I head over to the gate. And because my gate is nearby, I don't need to be there that early. And even even better thing is because I'm doing United Premium Plus or Premium Economy, I'm placed in the four priority boarding groups, boarding groups one and two. So I don't have to wait in that really like, long line for economy, which makes my life much easier. So this ticket was actually quite worth it, if you ask me. Now, last time I already gave an overview of the Premium Plus cabin, but I want to see if there's anything different around, just for consistency sake. But And you see you get you use the headphones and they get the bags, but this time I, you get slippers. I didn't get slippers last time, so that really surprised me. And when it comes to legroom, I think it's worth noting I'm around 5'11", 180 cm, and I could stretch my legs very well. So like for a Premium Plus cabin, I would at least come to expect that. Everything is there as you expect. It's the same aircraft, to be fair, different, same models specifically. As for the buttons for reclining and stuff, the buttons are just as hard to press as it was last time. And surprisingly, I had a free seat next to me. No one was sitting next to me, so I got even extra leg room. Now, we were taking off from runway 07 right today, so that means I'm sitting on the right side, so I get a perfect view of everything during takeoff. Ooh. Yeah, it was going to be around a 12 hour flight and overall the experience was pretty similar to last time and it was pretty comfortable with light turbulence. We did get food in the form of breakfast and honestly it wasn't that good, it looked pretty crap. And the bottom line is there was really nothing much to add compared to last time so the, I didn't get much footage in general and now as you can see we're starting to descend over the bay area into San Francisco. Okay, 
so so far I've made I've made it out of the baggage claimer. I'm just not sure what I should do with my luggage, with my suitcases here, just because it's a long connection. So I'm just gonna go to the airline just to see what's going on first. All right, stage one is mission success. I got out of the airport luggage stored. Now I need to get an Uber. I want to go visit uh, the Intel Museum. So Intel, so Intel's headquarters. That's down in Santa Clara. So I'm gonna spend most of my time there before I wait for my friend to come get me, and he's gonna drive me around, which I'm really grateful for. Well, first time in the properly in the U.S. Interesting view so far. Weather seems comfortable. So let's do some exploring. Oh my God! Look at what the... wow! Not only do I get to see plane spotting from here, but if you look behind, Intel's headquarters. This is the what building? Robert, Robert and Noise building. So I'm in the middle of nowhere here in Silicon Valley. So I guess this is where this is where my this is where my day starts. I guess I have a lot of exploring to do. Man, this is so nice actually because then you look at it look at everything around it's pretty peaceful and you can see all the buildings the flags the u.s flags just waving around so very i don't know it feels like a very interesting location i actually want to try to i want to try the buses around here i think the video is actually like 10 minutes down the road i want to have a little visit Well, I fucked up. I got off at the wrong bus stop. I, I, I forget that buses here aren't like the ones in HK where you press a button to get off. And so there's ones where you pull. And those ones make zero sense to me. And why is there glass on the floor? What, what is this? This is, so, this is so sketchy but cursed at the same time. Honestly, yeah, I'm just walking up. The, I, yes, I got, I'm walking over to NVIDIA's place. I got off like the stop after. So if you look where I am. I'm walking up the equivalent of a fucking hill. It's like almost like a highway. This is crazy. This is like living a true like suburban American lifestyle right here. I just hopped by a 7-Eleven and bought myself a bottle of water. So this is worth the energy burn before I get lunch later with a friend. So I'll see you there. Okay, there's a lot of cars around here. I'm actually staring at the video's headquarters right now. It really stands out in this area right behind me. We can see the video's logo. Because everything behind here feels like it's like some random suburban neighborhood. Then look at this and it looks like it came out of some Star Wars movie out of some, uh, some hotel group. So it's very different from everything. And now I have to cross what looks like some big expressway. And the road paving is barely competent. So I am slightly concerned. So Nvidia seems like they have their own entire shuttle bus service for their headquarters. That's pretty nice actually. I mean that's kind of not too surprising but it's nice to see. And see, it's just bounded by all this expressway and all this nature around. It's pretty awesome in my eyes. Yeah, so I walked around a bit more and got to Qualcomm's headquarters. And then my friend managed to find me. And then he drove me over to Apple's area. Because he works at the Apple Park Visitor Center. So I saw Infinite Loop and then the main Apple Park Visitor Center. So what you see here is just a little bit, some small footage that I got from there. I really like how Apple designed all of this with a lot of greenery and mines surrounding it. So granted, I know they paid a lot of money to the city. This is where I learned that they also have their own Apple bus service. The Apple commuter bus, yeah. Ah. They just put out, this is like the station. Oh, wait, like, right, like right there, here. Right there, that, that whole area, that's, you know, and that's where the bus is. Apparently, Apple Store designs in the world are only designed by seven architects in the world, and that really surprised me. What also surprised me is the fact that they have a, a small cafe in here, and then my friend has, of course, his Apple employee discount, so we just casually got a drink. I really love the design of this area and just how green it is, and not only is it moderate and minimalistic at the same time, but then it even sh shelters the headquarters, which is kind of smart if you think of a design perspective. Like it's, like it's pretty impressive. I mean, that's the power of AR for you, so... Wait, do you want to help me swipe? Oh, uh, yeah. Swipe. <laughs> we don't, unfortunately, we don't have enough hands. We need to be like an octopus or something just for this. And that's, yeah, that's cool. So if I swipe it first, you know what? I'll just do it with my hand. The Visitor Center and the Infinite Loop Store have some exclusive merchandise so I couldn't help but buy myself a t-shirt from here, some of the Apple Park one, and you can actually see them in the bottom right corner. Am I an idiot for buying an Apple t-shirt? Well, maybe.
We got tacos for a late lunch. Unfortunately, I didn't film any of that. And then he drove me back to the airport. It was a nice day. I don't remember if I ended up not showing you all, but I bought two of the exclusive t-shirts from the app, from the Apple stores. One from the Infinite Loop store, one from the Apple Park store. Actually, not many people know about the Infinite Loop store, which is pretty surprising if you ask me. So now, yeah, my friend's stopped in the back of the airport. I'm just heading back. Just to back to collect the suitcases and check it back in because it's, it's sufficient time now. So that means I'm going to just check back in there. Not, back, not check back in, I mean like just drop off like, my baggage Probably go collect it first from the rental from the rental area And then gonna properly check, uh, check it in onto the plane area So let's go do that right now Honestly, San Francisco Airport Despite the annoying US system of transfers and whatnot Other than that, pretty nice airport Here's the thing, like look at this This is the design and there's Apple Park on it This one is, this. apparently this was only released last week because like my friend works at Apple, he told me this whole, this was just new last week, so this is the newest one. So I'd say to, it was expensive, yeah, but you know, add employee discount, it's, yeah, yeah, I can't say it was worth it for something exclusive like that. Afterwards, I ended up getting tacos for dinner, we're pretty good, and I was just sitting around waiting for the flight. And this time I'm flying on a 737 MAX. I've flown on many 737-800 NGs before, but this will be my first time on the MAX, and the MAX does have better engines and they're more quieter, so I'm really excited to see how, the, how true that actually is. Now, I wasn't sure what to expect with the MAX, but I expected it to be rather similar to the NG-800, but and the seat was actually a bit more comfortable. Legroom was just about similar, but I found it was a really good mood lighting in there as a whole compared to the 800 for United at least. As far as in-flight entertainment goes, it's this 13-inch HD screen here, so it's better resolution than the one that we saw in the NG. And as a whole, I do agree with people. The Max 8 seemed much quieter, and the seat was more comfortable as a whole. Nothing that much happened on the flight, you know, just a quick snack and a drink there. But that's about it. Nothing too significant. But yeah, I was sitting right next to the engine seat. I selected that seat, and I agree. Much quieter engine, and it is a more efficient engine. Throughout the flight, I really just slept and gave myself some micro naps and then eventually we were descending into Toronto and we were descending through clouds and the view was very nice and of course engines were also really good acoustically here. You see here when a reverse thrust disables itself and now the engine's basically an idle thrust, you could just see how quiet it is and which is that's really great. It makes the experience better and more comfortable. Personally, I like engine noise, but for the average person, I think this would be a really good thing. So now I'm just here wait at the baggage claim waiting for stuff and then and then I'm getting an Uber to my to a relative's place, so I have a long wait here because nothing has arrived yet. So as of recording now, this is this is Sunday and I'm now in my place in Waterloo for for I'm gonna be for my co-op term. So this is it. so this is my room. There's like a public space up there, but there's people out there, so I'm not gonna show that. But you see, this is this is gonna be the bed area, uh, my cushion is always. My desk area is over here. I'm still unpacking for, so that's why there's some stuff here. And then it just cover the store everything. 
So that's going to be an end to this aviation vlog. I do hope that you guys enjoyed it. I really enjoyed making this vlog and just being able to explore around. So if you do want to see more vlogs, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And of course, leave a like and I'll see you guys on the next video. See ya.